was this amazing exchange between Tucker Carlson and Dan Bongino after Hurricane Harvey. Uh, if you don't know who Tucker Carlson is, he's essentially 220 pounds of white nationalism stuffed in a doughy bag, placed in a suit, and propped up on a chair. Dan Bongino is a former military person, a former Secret Service agent, and uh, he's somebody who has the chins of three men put together, none of which I'm sure have anything to do with methamphetamines or steroids. Have you seen Dan Bongino? He's basically just a giant raging skull. Like Ghost Rider without the motorcycle, the jacket, and the flames. So. Matt. This got a lot of play back in the day. Now this was after Harvey. Now keep in mind, Harvey still happened in the shadow of Katrina. Um... Harvey was, was, you know, in Houston. A lot of people got flooded. Um, of course, there are certain wards, districts, counties, neighborhoods, which are predominantly black versus predominantly white. Um, do you need to guess where Fox News was pulling most of their news footage and coverage from? Well, okay. How about I just show you? Yes, let's do that. Mass devastation in Houston has brought with it a breakdown in law and order, not as bad as in some natural disasters, but pretty bad. There have been numerous reports of looting by storm survivors. Yesterday, ABC reporter Tom Lamas was honest enough to tweet this, quote, we're witnessing loot. Keep in mind, now hold on, as Tucker says the word looting, it's black people. Oh, don't worry. We're going to get back to this one, I promise. Pretty bad. There have been numerous reports of looting by storm by survivors. Way. Yesterday, ABC reporter Tom Lamas was honest enough to tweet this, quote, We're witnessing looting right now at a large supermarket in the northeast part of Houston. Police have just discovered a body nearby. Just reporting. Hey, you know what they have at a grocery store? Groceries. You know what they don't have at a grocery store? Uh, flat screen TVs, cell phones, and money. All the thing that you say looters love to loot. If you're in the middle of a natural disaster and everything is flooded and you have no electricity and you're living on top of your roof because the water is 12 feet high and uh, the Red Cross in the U.S. government, of course, is nowhere to be found and you go to a grocery store, are you looting? Hmm? Let's find out what he saw. And for that, he was vilified, Lamas was, and accused of attacking hurricane survivors. Dan Bongino was a former NYPD officer, and he joins us now. Um, if you've never seen methamphetamines in human form, just wait. Here comes Dan Bongino. <laughs> you can look, you can already see the vein pulsing out of his forehead. Look at it. It's like thump, 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 thump. Thump, thump. It's like coming right at you in 3D. It's like watching Avatar, only instead of blue people, it's the giant thrombosis in Dan Bongino's forehead. Um, Dan, this is just a fact of life in situations like this. I've seen it firsthand a lot during Katrina. We saw cops looting Walmart uh, on camera during Katrina. I saw myself, yeah. people looting liquor stores and shoe stores. That's not the same as starving people feeding themselves. What about our society has... I'm sorry, did you just miss the part where Tucker opened up by saying people were looting a grocery store and now he's doubling back and saying, oh, but not looting food. Like, what, what the hell does he think people are looting at a grocery store? It just dawned on me that Tucker Carlson doesn't actually buy his own groceries and has no idea of what's actually in a grocery store. I'm pretty sure that Dan has a housekeeper from, I don't know, Colombia, Peru, Ecuador, Nicaragua, and she's the one who goes to the grocery store. So actually, I'm going to take that last statement back. Tucker Carlson actually doesn't know what's in a grocery store. Shopping is for peasants. It's <laughs> changed so much that noting that you're watching it is somehow a thought crime. 
Oh, well, we've had complete culture rot, and I noticed Tucker because I saw a lot of the uh, the mob attack Tom Yamas on Twitter. Mob. That it was largely coming from you know liberals who seem to feel like they're entitled to the property of other people. Listen, no one's trying to diminish at all the epic human tragedy we're watching unfold right now in Texas, but this kind of reminds. Hey, everybody. I think we've covered this before, but I'm going to remind you again, okay? Because this is useful in any situation. When somebody says something, and then they say the word but, and then they say another something, everything that came before the word but is pointless, means nothing, and they don't actually believe it. Like, like, oh, you know, it's, uh, it's a real shame that black people are so lazy. Oh, but, but. You know, I, I, I have, I have tons of black friends, but, but God, I, I, you know, it's really horrible how people say such bad things about them for being lazy, but let's be honest, they're kind of lazy. You're just like, <laughs> sounds about white. Reminds me of the old uh, have luck Ellis quote, you know, that civilization is a thin crust on a volcano. And Tucker, that thin crust is composed of law and order. When order breaks down, we have absolutely nothing. We cannot ever condone looting and the taking of other people's property, because then at what point, you know, where does it end? I mean, relief agencies and government are doing their best to get people fed and get people housed, but we can't condone looting. This is just complete breakdown. Right. Well, only like a decadent rich kid in. Hey! I know there's a lot of people out there dying and they're baking on their rooftops like fucking chicken nuggets in a microwave. And God, that's really horrible. But we can't be taking capital from capitalists. Don't you understand? It devalues capital. Fucking Dan Bongino. In Brooklyn would say something like that. And in fact, most people who did, I checked, are decadent rich kids in Brooklyn, of course. But you, you think about the people who were hurt by this. There were, there were um, interviews today, for example, with the owner of the Bronze Bar in Houston, and it was being looted, said, my business that I've worked for was looted last night. I can't believe people are capable of that. Samir Abrahim, who has got a store there too, watched it being lead, looted uh, on surveillance cameras. These people are taking advantage of the weather and have been robbing us blind since last night. We tried to get there, but couldn't reach it due to floods. It's These not people. big corporations who suffer. It's like ordinary, normal working people who suffer as, you know, the crowd cheers them on on Twitter. I mean, who pushes back against this? Does anybody? I'm going to push back against this, Tucker. Uh, your take is hot garbage. Hey, you know why people have to go loot grocery stores and bars and convenience stores? Because the government, as usual, did nothing. They left people to sit on their rooftops in 12 feet of water and bake and fry in the sun like a piece of bacon on a fucking frying pan. And then when the Redneck Armada showed up, and if y'all don't know who the Red Redneck Armada is, they are dope as hell. They're just regular people from all around the panhandle who all have boats, mostly white, who show up anytime there's a flood and just start throwing their boats in the water and pulling people off of fucking roofs because the government's too goddamn incompetent to do it themselves. And in Houston, they were actually keeping the Redneck Armada out and didn't want them coming in because it would confuse rescue efforts already in place. Oh, my stream's too HD. My apologies. I'll turn that shit down. Anybody have the courage to say you're not allowed to steal or hurt other people just because there was a storm? Yeah, I mean, think about it. What kind of like certifiable savage man beast do you need to be to walk into a small business? And there are videos of this on Twitter, sadly. I wish I, you know, you can't unsee it, of people looting cash registers. Like, what's your excuse for that? I don't understand. Like, these are small businesses. Uh, I don't know, maybe the failing of capitalism. These, are, these aren't the decadent Thurston Howell types. These are people who work their whole lives to keep their heads, you know, uh, 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 and then they're out of the, you know, out of the red ink. You know, keep the hey, you know why there's red ink? Capitalism. Their heads above water, you know, no, no pun intended there. But to stay, to stay alive and you're stealing their money and their livelihood because you have some, what, some sense of entitlement during a tragedy? I mean, that, that's really kind of deranged when you boil that down to the... So, the reason why I wanted to bring this one up is number one to remind everybody uh don't believe the hype okay i'm just so damn high tech hey 
Remember that time, like a few years ago, when the National Review wrote a headline saying Colin Kaepernick should drop the silly national anthem protest and get to work? Funny, because the headline they wrote yesterday said, protesting works, rioting doesn't. Protesting works? I'm sorry. When Colin Kaepernick was a black man who was peacefully protesting, you said drop the protests because they don't work. Now that black people are burning shit to the ground with the assistance of a ludicrous amount of white people who are driving in from the suburbs in Audis with fucking, you know, Colonel Sanders bumper stickers on them, um, all of a sudden, now protesting works and rioting doesn't. See, when people tell you, don't protest like this, don't protest like this, protest like this, but protest like this, what they're telling you is, we want you to protest in a way that we are comfortable enough with that doesn't inconvenience us enough so we can sort of tip our hand and go, hey, look, a protest, and then go on with our life. Which is exactly not the reason for protest. The whole idea is to inconvenience people and force them to encounter this. Kind of crazy. While you're posting all the black people looting, make sure you post this too. Look, white people, they're looting. Show of hands, how many people have heard of white people being called looters and thugs? How oh, wait, let me put my hand down because that's not actually a thing and it never happens. Good Lord. Looting Target is un-American. The real American thing to do is loot Iraq, Iran, Kuwait, Pakistan, Yemen, Somalia, Syria, Afghanistan, Sudan, Vietnam, Mexico, Cuba, Panama, Haiti, Nicaragua, Jamaica, North Korea, Guatemala, the Philippines, Dominican Republic, Ghana, Chile, Cambodia, Angola, and El Salvador. That would be much more American. Yes, let's do that. Oh, it's horribly an American to go looting. I'm sorry. Are, do, do, do you not know how we got America? Y'all must be new here. That's, that's adorable. Okay. American revolutionaries used to straight up pour hot tar all over tax collectors because of the stamp tax and douse them in bird feathers while tearing apart their house brick by brick. If you think they wouldn't burn down a target in opposition to police brutality, you did not pay attention to history. Hey, all those people are like, eh, eh, why are you destroying property and validate your protest? Be like, you do know about the Boston Tea Party, right? And by the way, I got pushback from conservatives on the Boston Tea Party thing. And we're like, well, they were just stealing tea that had the tax stamp of King George. And it was it was a peaceful protest and they didn't actually destroy any person's property. Be like, oh, so y'all don't know they also stole all the rum out of all those ships while they were down on the dock? Oh, oh, that's right. That's inconvenient. Doesn't fit your narrative. Don't! Assholes. Ah. Uh. So, once again, so we can get through this, the difference between an uprising and a riot is how much capital is possessed by the people who own the outlet producing the video or article. Okay, we good there? Excellent. Now we'll keep moving around. <laughs> Hey, you want to know the difference between a looter and a survivor? I'll tell you the difference. The difference is called melanin. <laughs> hey, does anybody remember this after Hurricane Katrina? Hold on, let's take a look. Hey, top picture. Look, this is a young black man. A young man walks through chest deep flood water after looting a grocery store in New Orleans. On Tuesday, floodwaters continue to rise in New Orleans. Literally. Literally. On the same day, four hours later. Look what the AFP released. Here's a picture of two white people doing the same thing. Hey, hold on. Let's see what it says. Two residents. Residents. Two residents wade through chest deep water after finding... Bread and soda from a local grocery store. Hold on. Let me reread that sentence to you. Two residents wade through chest deep water after finding bread and soda from a convenience store. Um. 
Now, can anybody tell me why the top one is looting and the bottom one is finding? That's right. Because white people just find stuff all the time, right? Hey, look, we found this country. Hey, look, we found these indigenous people. Hey, look, we found very dark people that we can put into slavery. Yeah, that's what we do. We find stuff. We don't take it. We just find it. Now, if we had been slightly darker, we would have looted it. That's right. One's looting, one's finding. There you go.